4 minutes and 37 seconds, ERCOT revealing tonight that's how close Texas was from a total collapse of its power grid. What we saw in Texas, um, you know, was a, a colder, deeper, wider amount of weather that we've really, you know, ever seen. We've had cold weather and we've had events that have led to, to failures before. We had really bad deep freezes in Texas in 1983, 1989, 2011, and 2021. And each one strained the grid and led to blackouts of one sort or another. But it feels like a replay of 2011 in terms of power plants tripping offline, the natural gas system freezing up, the gas freeze-offs causing more power plants to go offline, and then you have like a water crisis and this kind of thing. As several power plants around the state failed, Central Texans faced ongoing electric blackouts as ERCOT cut off power across the region, neighborhood by neighborhood. The feds had warned Texas of poor winterizing plans a decade ago after another big freeze crippled the state. But recommendations in this report, FERC's new chairman says, were largely ignored. But this one was uh, was was colder and wider and longer, lasted longer than um, than 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 previous events. All 254 Texan counties have imposed a winter storm warning. That's never happened before. As the cold Arctic mass um, came in, is we saw an, an extreme increase in the demand for heating in Texas, as you know everyone was wanting to stay warm. About 60% of homes in Texas use electricity, 40% use for natural gas. And we, we just saw like a, an extremely high amount of heating. Now we meet some, we meet peak demands like this in the summer all the time. The difference between this, this, uh, this event and that event is there was competition in the natural gas system. So while, you know, power plants were wanting to consume natural gas to make that electricity, homes were also wanting to consume natural gas for heating. And at the same time, our supply out of West Texas, we had some wells freeze off, some some gathering lines freeze and we weren't able to put more gas into the system and we ended up short on the natural gas system. So some power plants couldn't get gas. Um, some other power plants also had freezing issues with cooling water or sensors or all kinds of things. When it all came down to it, you know, we lost about 40% of our thermal fleet during the time when, you know, we were, uh, you know, demanding the most amount um, from both of these systems. Transmission connections between Texas and the rest of the United States are really pretty limited. So it's difficult for other places in the United States to come to their aid by shipping power. Every source of power that the state of Texas has has been compromised. The entire natural gas system from the wellhead to the power plant really just broke down. Uh, access to coal uh, generated power, access to gas generated power also have been compromised, uh, whether it be with regard to systems freezing up uh, or equipment failures. It's just frozen right now. It's frozen in the pipeline. It's, it's frozen at the rig. Uh, it's frozen in the transmission line. So, and Governor, so they are incapable, that they, the, the natural gas providers, are incapable of being able to come up with a gas that feeds into the generators that generate the power uh, to, that will send power to people's residences there in the Dallas area. As well as uh, our nuclear power facility. One of the lead reasons in the Houston area in particular uh, that caused uh, power outages is the South Texas nuclear project uh, was shut down uh, because uh, of an operational difficulty. Comanche Peak, which is a, a nuclear reactor, was within just minutes of going offline. And if that had happened, we really could have had a blackout. By far the biggest piece, the piece that that overwhelmed every other piece of the story is, is the way that the gas systems and the gas electricity wasn't there when we needed it. Actually, it's more their natural gas plants that have been affected by the cold weather than it is their wind. And wind turbines had their trouble with ice on blades, but wind wasn't the biggest problem for the grid. The biggest problem for the grid was the frozen thermal plants, the plants that use coal or natural gas or nuclear that really didn't show up to perform. You'll hear the people who talked about the freezing of the wind turbines. It was a very small percentage of uh, the power generation that was lost in Texas from renewables, the vast majority was from uh, baseload generation. During the daytime, solar was the one thing that far outperformed and, and gave us way more power than we expected. It's a, it's a complex set of factors, but what we know right now is that uh, the wind power plants are mostly meeting their expected performance levels. But what is not happening in Texas is that many of the thermal power plants, the plants that boil water to make electricity, like natural gas-fired power plants, coal-fired power plants, and at least one nuclear unit, 
are not um, producing energy. They're, they're, they're suffering outages. And that dwarfs the amount of wind resource that's not performing right now. So it really is a, a traditional power plant problem, not a clean energy problem. I and many others have been telling them for years, you should be starting to think about extreme weather events that we know are getting worse, demonstrably, regardless of your viewpoint on climate change and cause. Texas is, is in the gun sites for an awful lot of extreme weather, and extreme weather is getting worse and worse. We designed this entire grid for Ozzie and Harriet weather. We are already facing Mad Max, and it's getting worse.